Ah, lovely to see you, church. Hope you're having a great time. Before I start, those of us or online who know uh, Ron and Gretel uh, Hibbert, and uh, there is a service to thank God for his faithfulness towards Sarah, uh, pray together uh, and so on, and pray with Ron and Gretel. It will be at four o'clock at uh, All Saints Croxley Green. You are most welcome to come and, uh, and worship the Lord there with us. Uh, okay, so uh, if you don't mind, I would ask you to stand up and read the word of God together. We're going to read Psalm uh, Lee. God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For they have no pangs until death. Their bodies are fat and sleek. They are not in trouble as others are. They are not stricken like the rest of mankind. Therefore, pride is their necklace. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes swell out. Their hearts overflow with their scoff and speak with malice. Loftily they threaten oppression. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue struts through the earth. Therefore his people turn back to them and find no fault in them. And they say, how can God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked, all my hands in innocence. For all the day long I have been stricken and rebuked every morning. I said, I would speak thus, I would have betrayed the generations of your children. But when I thought how to understand, it seemed to me a wearisome task, until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I discerned their end. Truly you set them slippery places. You make them fall to ruin. How they are destroyed in a moment, swept utterly by terrors. Like a dream when one wakes up. O oh Lord, when you rouse yours in my heart, I was brutish and ignorant. I was like a beast towards you. Whom I continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you shall perish, but, but unfaithful to you. But for you, I have made the Lord God that I may tell. Hallelujah. You may be seated. This is, uh, if you open your Bible, which I do advise you to open your Bibles when you're hearing the word, take notes, you know, uh, whatever God would say to you. But if you open your Bibles, you will find in the beginning of that psalm, it says book three. And uh, uh, that's because the book of Psalms is 150 Psalms. It's divided into five books. Like this is alongside the Torah, there are five books. And in a way, when you study well, you can see how uh, it's journeying with you in that the story of man in, in the first book and the need for God, the shepherd, all of that, and so on. Uh, if, I, if I stay to unpack just the book of Psalms, it would take a long time, so we'll have to move on. Uh, it's an introduction to the whole book, okay? Uh, and if you have a Jewish Bible, Psalm 1 and 2 would be one psalm, all right? So one, Psalm 1 and 2, with the themes that they are in that psalm, are the introduction and it speaks basically about this 
the importance of the word of God and that you walk with him, not in the counsels of those who are not walking with him, and that you understand that there is a Messiah and he will rule and he will save. That's Psalm 1 and 2. And it ends at the end of every book. So like if you go to uh, Psalm 72, last verse, there is a doxology, there is a, a, a verse of praise. And it's almost the same at the end of every book, okay? And uh, so you, you see that thing about praise, and it ends as well, 29 and 150, 146, 100. Uh, all of them, they start with hallelujah and end with hallelujah, which tells you you can praise God at all times. And the reason you can praise God, because you have his word, you have his promises, you can rely on his word, his word is true, but trust the word. Lean on the word of God, okay? Don't listen to the counsel of those who don't care for God and expect the Messiah and know that the Messiah is king and he will rule over all, okay? So this is why you can praise him. You can praise him at all times because you have a savior, you have a deliverer. You have a healer. You have a God who cares. You have a God who intervened in the life of humans to change the misery that we live in into freedom and into coming the book of Psalms. So it helps us to pray through all life issues, through you're chased by your enemies and so on. It helps you to praise because though circumstances are difficult, God is not dead. Unless you. Unless you make him dead. For you. Okay? So, that's uh, in a nutshell uh, the book of uh, uh, Psalms. And then, 12, I think, and uh, Asaph wrote this, uh, this song. And I love this song because the guy is really honest. Okay, and he's starting saying this. Well, truly, truly is good, uh, God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, and he's speaking about his own weaknesses. As for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly... St Why were you shaky? Oh, uh, for I was envious. Envious of the arrogant. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, I was envious of them. I look at them, and they are prosperous. Bad people, but they are prosperous. They cheat, and yet they are prosperous. They fool around, and yet things are okay. It looks like they're having fun. They're having a blast. They don't care for God. And yet, they are blessed. At least it looks like they are. That, it's not that fatness, okay? Just to, all right? It means that they are healthy and blessed and uh, rich and, you know, and it shows on them. Okay? This is why as well there is that, you know, strange word, fat and sleek, which of course if you look at me, you can apply the first part but not the second. <laughs> and that shows you that this is not the meaning of that word, okay? All right, just take this out of the way. All right? Life. Ah. Amazing. Life is great. Yeah, okay. And you're, you're not actually like that. Even more, he's saying later on in a verse, he's saying for... For I, my heart was stricken all day. I was punished. Like, I felt something is wrong. He even thought it was for nothing. It was vain. It didn't mean anything. All that discipline that I put myself in. I wonder if you feel like that sometimes. If you are in a situation in your life where you think, how come this is right? How come... It's 
you know, it's working for them, but not me. How come I can, oh, this is wicked. No, <laughs> wicked in like, during my time, wicked was a bad word, okay? So that they are wicked and yet they're okay. Like God didn't bring his, you know, iron, you know, his uh, uh, golf club and he didn't do that. Why? Evil. They're arrogant. They speak against God, even. Like, even if it's not for me, even if it's not for justice and righteousness on earth, just at least because they are speaking against him. And don't we see nowadays in our culture that? Think about the most famous people, the most powerful people. The, the, are they your role model of piety or knowing God? Or he doesn't know about what's going on. And this is where Asaph was, okay? And, uh, and like even people are impressed by them because they look successful, you know? They have uh, uh, nowadays, uh, success is about followership, isn't it? Like on TikTok and Instagram and so on. I'm very successful, <laughs> just to say, okay? So th you, you measure success by, oh, they have a million followers, uh, yeah? So they are successful. So they go and try and look and learn from them. Learn their ways. They drink from their and eat from their hands. And they see no wrong in this. This is what Asaph is struggling with. Where are you, Lord? You haven't done anything. So could it be, uh, or you don't know about what's going on, you cannot really deal with what's happening. You have no authority here. Because surely they look like they are in authority. They, stay, they say stuff and it happens. Yeah? So maybe, maybe this is the case. Asaphim is a very, in a very hard place. And he even said, well, no, no, I, look, this thing, I really need to think about it more. I really need to get anywhere. I'm not getting anywhere. And I cannot even say those doubts and fears that I have, those feelings that I have, because I still, you know, I still hold that job as a worship leader. I'm still one of his people. And we've heard how God is true, how he saved our people from the land of Egypt, how he got them through the waters, how he won against all their enemies. Rock and... So where is that? Where is all of that? Where are you, Lord? Were you just... God of the old times? Are you not the same today? Are you just for them? I'm a worship leader in your, uh, in your sanctuary. My kids are struggling and their kids are not. Why is it like that? Why do they bully the poor and get away with it? Why do they abuse the weak and get away with it? Where are you, Lord? And to Asaph, God was, let's say, hidden, not showing, definitely not visible, yeah? Sometimes we allow what we see to determine what is true. You allow your perception and your reasoning to tell you what is true and what is not true. In other 
And that's a terrible thing to do. You allow your circumstances and the issues that you're going through and how you're reasoning to define and describe who God is and who he should be. Where? And uh, she was passing through a very hard time, that leader, and she said, uh, I thought about this, and it's like really loving, so it must be true. And Susie said, uh, I don't know, not sure about that. Uh, if it is true, then it must be loving. But not if it's what you think is loving, it must be true. Okay, love me as I am. Which sounds really Christian, isn't it? Okay? Because if you are a Christian, you belong to God, then your love, and love is, you accept me as I am. So if what would make me happy, think if it's a wife. If what would make me happy is to walk out on you, you have to accept me as I am. Let me If what would make me happy is to harm you, because that makes me really happy, you have to accept me as I am. If I'm a pedophile, if what would make me happy is to abuse kids, you should accept me as I am, shouldn't you? And without thinking, we would say, isn't it love? Love is to love. You see, when you let yourself be governed by what you see and how you feel because of what you see, you don't think straight. You cannot rely on how you feel. You cannot even rely on your reasoning. And if you doubt that, if you have your wife next to you, just ask her. I would tell you she doesn't rely on your thinking. <laughs> In her heart of hearts. You cannot rely on your thinking. But when we are faced with the issues of life and they overtake us, they overwhelm us, and we look into them and we... And then that affects our thinking, our reasoning, and therefore how we behave and how we see God. Senses are given to really guide you. But there are spiritual senses. If you're only living with your physical senses, you're seeing one perspective. If you think about the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon was saying, I looked under the sun, or in some translation, it would be under the heaven. Yeah, if you're only looking under the heaven, boss. But when you see from a different perspective, I say, is putting it like that. But when I went into your sanctuary, when I saw from your perspective, when I saw the truth, when I realized, oh, my thinking changed. Now I'm not on a slippery slope anymore. I discovered that they are, those who looked stable, strong, with authority, they are on slippery slope, and they don't realize it. They don't realize it. And the whole issue is in that part. When I entered into your presence, when I saw what was invisible to me, when I had the revelation, when I had that, now I moved from doubt and fear into trust. You see, it's okay that we doubt. 
it's okay that we doubt. It's okay that we have feelings that maybe sometimes you're not really comfortable with. That's all right, as long as you don't let them rule over you. You see, feelings nowadays are dealt with in two different ways. The secular way is if you feel it, it must be right. You feel it, you should do it. Why? It must be right. At least it's right for you. Your truth. I have no idea what that is. My truth. There is no your truth. It's either true or not. Okay. If you feel it, it must be right. So you go with your feelings. Rubbish. Utter rubbish. But there is, as well, a very unhealthy response to feelings as well, it, and it's the religious one. So you would be upset, you don't really understand God, you can't see, like, how does that add up, but you feel, oh, I cannot really, I cannot really, you know, consider that. I cannot harbor that feeling. So you don't take it to the Lord. No, no, you want to look like, oh, no, I am, I'm good, I don't doubt you. So anyone would talk to you, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm good, praise the Lord. Oh, there is that thing about, I'm fantastic. Anyway, right, and praise the Lord and everything is fine and, okay. And on the inside, you're a mess. Now, I'm not saying that you need to talk to everyone, but definitely you should choose some really good people, wise people to talk to. But more importantly than anything, you want to talk to God about that. You want to enter his presence. You want to see him face to face. You want to see his per perspective. You want to hear his wisdom about where you are. You might not be, you might not have. Job, God himself said he is an amazing guy, an upright guy, a righteous guy. And Job certainly really getting confused. So I've done everything I knew. I did all the righteousness that I knew of. And yet, look at me. And you are saying he's talking to his friends. You are saying I'm punished because I'm bad. My issue is, I know I didn't do what you're thinking I've done. And yet I don't know where, I, why am I where I am? I have no idea. And he got so confused with those conversations and so on. And God in his mercy sent him a younger guy telling him, well, you know, I agree with you, I understand, and life sucks, and it's, it's true. But don't shows up, stand up as a man before me. Let's talk. And he starts speaking to him in the form of questions. And he asks him so many questions. None of those questions answered Job's questions. You need to meet with God. You don't need to think about stuff on your own. God is alive and personal. Have you met with him personally? Have you had that encounter and you keep having those encounters with the Lord personally? That's how life should be lived. It's not ideas. It's not, as they said, the faith of my mom or my family. No. It has to be yours. It has to be yours. That's what matters in life. That you would see him, hear him, understand his ways from him. And then life would get to be okay. Because 
there are so many perspectives that are missing, truth that is unclear, things that are wicked. I know it's wrong, and you are the judge. Won't you judge that? And one of those times, God told me, oh, I will. I will. If I come now with judgment, do you think my judgment won't include you? Mm, that stopped me in my tracks. <laughs> I wasn't asking for judgment any longer. <laughs> Another time, God explained to me how merciful he is and that he is patient. And I'm not that patient, at least 30, 40 seconds. And God would give an opportunity for people to repent several times, long years. In Canaan, more than 400 years. That's how patient and merciful God is. And yet now in society, what they want to talk about is that they are upset that God kills people. They are not upset when they kill their... God is not allowed to have his choice. God is not allowed to be God. You see, church, God is giving us a way forward. And he's telling us, if you want to walk with me, if you want to go through the journey of life with the ups and downs with me, here is what you need to do. You need to go that journey according to who I am and what I reveal to you. That's him personally with you, with us as a church. Very deceptive. That's it. Truth versus how we feel. Eternal versus temporal. God being the real king and God, or us and what we think and what people say. The real opportunity is that you have graciously, by the blood of Jesus, access to the Holy of Holies, a secure way to enter boldly so that so let us enter boldly the writer of the Hebrews saying yeah don't stay on your own thinking don't talk or consider the things that are not from him they would look to you as if they are truth but that's not the issue the issue is is he central in our lives that we live and move, as Paul is writing, from him and by him. That's the issue. Because I was envious and I, I reasoned wrongly and I came to the end of my tether and, and things were, I tried, I tried, okay? Until, until I went into his presence. Now I saw things very differently. And I'll tell you what now. Now for me, all who I depend on is him. So in terms of authority and in the heaven, in heavens I have no one but you. And here on earth, as I am still here, I now desire no one and nothing but you. I was acting like an idiot towards you. I was like a beast, not understanding anything. And yet, I was with you at all times because, because... <laughs> in my unfaithfulness. And you were so gracious, you didn't just let, didn't let go of my hand, you led me through, so I was able to come into your presence. And you opened my eyes, so I was able to realize, oh, things are not as I calculated them. And now I want to thank you. I want to thank you for who you are 
And I want to thank you to the extent that I want to speak about who you are all the time. But all of that, through really difficult circumstances or things that you cannot understand or hopes and wishes and ambitions that you didn't get them, you didn't get to see them coming through, okay? Or when you're reading the Bible and you're finding something hard, and you know sometimes we read the Bible with a pair of scissors, so we get the hard bits like, ah, definitely he didn't mean that, <laughs> okay? So dishonest. No, no, no. Have an honest struggle. Take what you don't agree with, what you don't. Meet with him. And everything is about that. Life, life is about meeting with God and living from that. Yeah. So, to wrap it up. We have a choice as individuals, but as well as a church together. While we're living in a life that contradicts and, and in, intentionally goes against God and the ways of God. Uh, celebrity culture, the hopes and dreams and the stuff that are, has nothing to do with reality or God. We're affected. We're affected by all of this. And we can allow this to shape us or we can choose to press in until we meet him and live from that place. That's your challenge. We would be the people who would press in, depending on the Holy Spirit to lead us and to make us for real wholehearted worship and authentic with God and each other. until he brings his kingdom as it is in heaven on earth. Do you accept the invitation? Pressing in until you see him, until you meet with him so that you would live from his perspective, from his revelation, not from your own thinking. Let's spend a moment and decide for yourself. What do you want to do? It might be that you don't have necessarily hard circumstances that you're going through, but you still have that choice. I choose to live my life from your presence that your presence would become life to me. The other choice is that you would lead your life according to your desires, your ambitions, your thinking. Whether you're aware of this or not, you're honest with yourself or not, doesn't matter. That's a choice that you would be making. I want to live my life from your presence. I want to keep pressing in, not with just ideas and, and memorized prayers. I want to keep pressing in until I know my eyes has seen the unseen God. My heart, my heart is filled with life. I heard his voice from his revelation, not from my thinking, not from my desires, my emotions. Make a choice. Make a choice.